In today's Madden 16 tip, we're going to be taking a look at route spacing uh, for your passing plays. What's up guys, my name is Cody and I would like to welcome you to this YouTube channel. Today we're going to be taking a look at a Madden 16 passing tip that I think is going to help you out not only in Madden 16, but also in Madden 17 and the future Maddens to come. Uh, for those of you that are wanting to follow along with the show notes, we are in the St. Louis Rams offensive playbook. We are the uh, New England Patriots on offense and the Denver Broncos on defense. On defense, we're utilizing uh, the cover two playbook, but you don't necessarily need to know that for what we're trying to share with you today. All right, so what I want to talk about today is I want to talk about this concept of route spacing. Now, what route spacing basically boils down to is how do you position your routes uh, when you're designing your plays, when you're putting together a scheme, how do you position your routes to give you maximum effectiveness uh, with the lowest amount of uh, basically negative result. Now this is a concept that Dan Gonzalez talks about in his passing article. We're actually going to be doing a quick series here on it uh, in the coming weeks. But what I want to talk about is we're in, again, a simple play. We're just going to use uh, kind of a sample play here from our St. Louis Rams offensive ebook. And one of those plays comes from the tight offset tight end. And this play is the play drive out. Now you want to select that play and uh, load it up in the game. And we'll be able to share with you a couple things uh, regarding it. So the, basically the point that I want to get across here is when you're putting a play together, you want to figure out basically how to put these routes together and understand where you're wanting to attack. Uh, so basically the way this works on the left side here, we've got pretty good spacing of our routes. Uh, we're planning on motioning Julian Edelman to the left side. Uh, and we're just going to show you here quickly how this works. And what you want to do is you want to just kind of run the play and then stop it and go back and review it in practice mode. So we're just going to take a sack here and we're going to go into instant replay and review it and see what we can see uh, with what we've just been able to accomplish here. So. What we like to do here is just basically we're going to look from the defensive perspective. It gives us a little bit of wider uh, range of uh, field here. And we're going to want to just kind of get up up in the, like the press box so we can really see how this all comes together. So we've got a, a quick out route to this left side. So this is basically this flat over here on this. Uh, if you're looking from you know the, where I'm looking, you're going to see it's on the far right here. Julian Edelman on this little quick out. Now that's a quick outbreaking pattern, uh, and what it does is it leaves another area of the field kind of open, and that's this interior uh, on the right side, so basically where the offensive line is. And we actually feel that with the crossing pattern um, here to circle. And then we have the flats to the right. We've got that field covered with this quick flat to the running back. He's going to take that depth of field. So really, the only, only position of the field that we're not attacking is this interior middle. And that's because this route to Gronkowski is not very good for the play because it's too shallow. Uh, what basically happens is Rob Gronkowski and LaFell, their routes run together. And, and so one player can cover two. So I hope this makes sense. So basically what we need to do is we need to stretch the field with Gronkowski's route. And we do that based off of coverages. So right here, there's two high safeties. And what this normally means is they're in cover two or cover four. And basically what that means is that these safeties are going to go deep up the field. So in that scenario, we want to basically run Gronkowski. We want him to get out of LaFell's way, but we don't want him to run himself out of the play. So what we're going to do is we're going to place him on a hitch route and we're going to smart route it. So basically this is a, cur a curl route, but the reason we make it a smart route, a hitch route, is because it beats man-to-man -man coverage. So now if he tries to run press man-to-man -man on me, I've now got a quick read, just this high pass to Greg or Rob Gunkowski here. You don't even need to high pass it. It's just throw it as soon as he turns around. He's going to make that catch for you. Uh, we threw it a little too quick there, but we'll show you this again. So now we have a route that beats man right over the middle. Now the key to this is not only does it beat man to man, but he stops. And what he's going to do is when they're in zone coverage, he's going to hold the yellow zone 
So stops goes zone coverage, and he's able to check down to Gronkowski against cover four. Now if they run a cover three shell, where they have multiple yellow zones on the field here, you're going to see that Gronkowski is going to hold that yellow, and we can easily sneak that route into LaFell coming on the crossing pattern. The key here is that the routes don't run into one another. So I want to show you an example of something like that. So if we were to put Julian Edelman on a deep vertical and then Rob Gronkowski on a slant, this is an example of the routes running into each other. And so they're, the corners have an easy job now because they're all running in the same vicinity. But now with what we've been able to do by changing the route so that now we have quick outbreaking patterns, we're not running too many verticals in the same very area, we're able to easily navigate through this and really have a play that can not only attack the left side of the field but the right side and the middle. Uh, I want to give you a quick example of one other thing here. So if we put Gronkowski on a fade and we motion him over here to the left, we now have uh, a similar scenario but they're breaking at different points. So they're all breaking to the outside at different points and it's going to allow us a nice one-on-one -on -one matchup for Danny Amendola. So when you're creating your routes, it's important to consider Number one, the flow of the play. So, for example, if we just did this, this is a popular play here, curl flats. We're running the same thing on both sides, and it's too much for the quarterback. What we want to do is we want to run curl flats to one side. So we're able to accomplish this by putting Gronkowski on the curl, Deion Lewis is on the flat, and then we have some other things going on over here, and we're able to easily navigate through the play. This prevents... Uh, the receivers from running into one another and also it helps because the defense has to stretch out and expand so just consider this concept when you're putting together your plays I hope this tip was helpful for you and guys I would ask you if you wanted more Madden 16 content we're trying to get you ready for Madden 17 so I would recommend guys hitting that subscribe button